In this lesson, we'll explore the almighty terminal. It is the most powerful tool available in Linux, as it allows you to do many different tasks in one single application. Here in the Linux desktop, I'm going to press the super key, the Windows key if you want, to bring up the dash. I'm going to type in terminal, and there's our terminal application. I'm going to click on it, and a new window will pop up. Let me maximize this so we can get a good look. The terminal is a very powerful tool that allows us to do many things on every single part of the system. Install packages, manage devices, editing text and everything. I'm going to give you a couple of commands that you can use to manipulate the file system so that you can be ready for when you need to develop. So in this case, I'm inside the home folder. You can see the tilde operator here which means we're inside home. This is my username and this is my host. So I am inside the Envato machine and I'm inside home. If I type in the following command, pwd, the system will print out the current directory I'm in. It is slash home slash Jose. I wasn't lying. So pwd stands for print working directory. I don't know if you did this in Windows or not, but the cd command is common between both systems. You can type cd and go to whatever folder you want to. If I type in cd with no arguments, I go straight to the home path. If not, I will go to the directory that I specify. If I type in cd and then slash, I will go to the root of our system. If you want to check out what files and folders are available, for example, in Windows you use the dir command. In Linux, you type in ls. It's a shorthand for list. If I type ls, you will see the many different files and folders available for the current directory. You can see the bin folder, the home folder, just like we saw in the previous lesson. There are many different options that you can pass to ls. For example, if I type in dash l, this will print out the list in a different format. Let's go ahead and press enter. You can see the different permissions for each different folder and file, who owns it, and the group it belongs to. This is the size and the date it was updated last. And finally, the name of the folder or file. These two files are actually links. In Windows, they're called shortcuts, but in Linux, they're called links, symbolic links. They're not just shortcuts, they actually represent the file it points to. If I have a link someplace else, but I want to make it stay where it is, I just want to create a shortcut and use it, you use a symbolic link like this one. Let's go back to the home directory. If I type in ls-l, we will get all of the files and folders inside the current directory, our home folder. If you want to create a new folder, you type in the mkdir command. mk stands for make, and dear for directory. I'm going to create a folder called projects. If nothing is printed out, that means it was successful. If I go ahead and type the same command ls-l, you can see the projects folder right in here. That's great. We can go ahead and enter that folder, so cd projects, and there you go. The current folder is always displayed. To remove this folder, you can go ahead to the previous directory and you do that by passing dot dot. I believe it's the same with Windows, so let's just do that and type in remove dir. We need to pass in projects and the directory is removed. You can see down below that the projects folder is no longer there. If you want to remove a file, you can use rm. It stands for remove. You type in the file, in this case I'm going to remove that temporary file that you see on top, right here. It's just a backup of the previous file so I can safely remove it. Pressing enter, the file will no longer be there. See? We only have the original file. If you want to create one new file, you type in touch and the name of the file. I'm going to type in a temp.txt file. If I list all of my directories, there's the temp.txt file. If you want to move a file to a different location, you type in the mv command. I'll toss this file around so that you can see where it's going. I'm going to move this to the documents folder. 
So if you pass a file name and then a folder, it will move that file into that folder. If I type in ls and then pass in documents, you will retrieve the contents of documents. And there's our temp text file. If I move documents slash temp, notice the pattern here. You can pass a full path depending on your working directory, so you can go all the way down into a series of nested folders. So I want to move documents slash temp txt back into our home directory. If you pass tilde, it will recognize. So passing ls-l, there's our temp.txt file again. Besides moving, you can copy files. So if you use the cp command, you can copy temp.txt to temp2, for example, .txt. You can see that the result is two different files. We have temp and temp2. I'm going to delete these two files, so temp2.txt and temp.txt. If you pass in more than one argument to remove, it will remove those two files, or every argument that you pass in. Passing enter and looking at the status of the files and folders, you don't see those two files. Okay, let's see what else we can do. We can change permissions for a particular file or folder. For example, the file.txt file is executable everywhere. Remember how I talked about permissions? Well, let's take a closer look at what you see here. Let's take a look at the file.txt file. And you can see that it has a dash means it is a file, otherwise it would have a D standing for directory. And you have a series of different letters that match each different permission for each different category. The order is the first three letters are for yourself, the owner of the file, then the three next letters are for the group, and the rest for anyone. So let's make this file.txt unreadable. First, I want to make sure that I can read it, and I'm going to pass in cat file.txt. These are the contents of the file. Cat allows you to list the contents of one particular file, or many of them. So in this case, I'm going to use the chmod command, and I'm going to pass in minus r. This means that I don't want this file to be readable. So if I pass dash r, it will remove the read flag for every category. I'm going to pass in the argument, and now if I need to read the contents of the file, I don't have permission to do it, because I removed the read permission. However, let's take a close look at file.txt. You can see that all of the read flags have been removed. But me, as the owner of the file, I can still write to it. So if I type in something like echo, and I type in a very simple phrase, for example, tuts plus, I can redirect this output back into the file. This is an operator that allows you to pass in any output that comes from the system and appends to the file. If I want to overwrite everything, I just pass in one. This will write everything that comes from the system into the file. Everything that was before goes to waste. It disappears. Since I don't want to override, I'm going to pass in double greater than signs and then the file. As you can see, I was able to do so. Now, if you want to check the contents of the file again, I can type in chmod plus r and file.txt. The result, we can now list the contents of the file. So cat file.txt, and there you go. We now have access to the contents of the file, and you can see that tuts plus is printed out into the file. So now you know a handful of commands that you can use for manipulating your file system. The terminal is actually very powerful, and there are many, many, many different features that I don't even know about. It's just a matter of practice in getting used to it. If you stick around long enough using Linux, you'll definitely feel more comfortable with using the terminal. We're starting to reach a point where we need to set up our development environment. For this lesson, I'm going to teach you how you can install packages in Ubuntu, or Debian-based distributions for that matter, because the package installation comes from Debian. And also, I'm going to teach you how to give a better look into your terminal. After all, if you're going to spend some time like me that uses Vim all the time, 
you want to have this terminal as beautiful and comfortable as possible. Let's do one thing to install the good looking solarized theme for our terminal. You need to type in apt-get install and then the name of the package. I'm going to install git since this is the tool that allows us to clone the repository for the solarized theme. If you type in something like this, you will see that you don't have permission. After all, you're just a regular user. You would have to be a root user to do this without typing in sudo. In fact, let's do that. If I type in something like su, you will have a password to type, but you don't have any password for root, right? If I pass in root, this won't work. You don't know the password for root. I just try to type in my own password and you can see that it doesn't work as well. Instead, what you do is you go to the beginning of the command and type in sudo. Sudo is a command that allows you to execute any task with root permissions. There's a group under your system called sudo that specifies which users have these permissions to run as root. If I press enter now, you will be required the password, so you just type in your password. After you type it, you will have root permissions to install this package. So it's going to the internet and it's going to retrieve the git package. Let's press enter and everything will be downloaded and installed. This works the very same way as Software Center. In fact, what the Software Center does is it creates a user interface around the apt-get package. So instead of constantly using the terminal to install packages, you can just use the software center. Okay, so git is installed, and now we can type in git dash dash help. There you go, git is installed. Now we want to make sure we download the correct theme on GitHub. This is the link that I'll be posting in the show notes. So let's just press enter, and voila. If I type in ls, you can see the folder right there. I'm going to enter it, so cd gnome terminal call is solarized. You can use tab for auto completion. So I'll just enter it and see the contents of the folder. You can see that we have a shell script. The first one is we should type in install.ch. So we want to make sure we run this command first before the other two. Let's type that. You use dot slash install. This is going to execute the shell script. And notice how the script is actually telling us what to do. We want to select a particular scheme. So in this case, I'm going for dark. Then a terminal profile. I'm going to press in one. And I want to override it. Yes, OK. Oh, we needed to type yes. So let's do it again. Dot install ch. I want the dark theme under default. And I'm going to type in yes. OK, there you go. Now we have the solarized theme, and this is actually pretty great. I like this color a lot more. It has a lot less contrast and lets me work a lot better without straining my eyes. Okay, so that's great. We now have a default theme. You can check for other themes in the Ubuntu Software Center. There are loads of different plugins and themes for the entire desktop and also for the terminal. So be sure to go there. Okay, now that we're more acquainted with the terminal, it's time we put it to use by setting up our development environment. See you soon.